most people will probably know you for your involvement in Cradle. Yeah, and probably. And maybe also Proficio as yes. a coach or trainer, right? Yeah. And uh, from what I heard, a bit of DJing. Yeah, that yeah, too. So <laughs> a bit of a celebrity. So people know you for these different things. Share a bit about that, your involvement in uh, Cradle, the early days, and, and how you got into Proficio and, and what you're doing now. Well, uh, Cradle, I mean, single-handedly, you got to thank uh, the late Nazrin Hassan. And to a certain extent, also Doc Siva if you understand the, the history of it. What's more interesting is my relationship with Nazrin dated all the way back to secondary school days. Oh, right. And so what a lot of people don't realize is the two of us were literally twilly and twilly dumb. Uh, Are you guys the same age? Or he was no, he was senior? one year my senior. Sorry. It was such that he was the brains and I was the social guy who had access to the hot girls that he wanted to meet. <laughs> okay. And it worked out. It started off actually weirdly enough around music we were jamming in mm. uh, the school music room and that's how we got to know each other and we became friends from then and but we both had this thing with tech later on when you know I, I was studying in Imperial he was in Kings we were in London and that was the formation of uh, something called the United Kingdom Executive Council and so my DJing world or my partying or entertainment side of the world helped uh, open up access for the formation of United Kingdom Executive Council because yeah. in order to so reach... So the DJing was when you were in UK? Yes, when right. we were both uh, still in the UK. And UKC was very instrumental because it start, started that whole connection of the who's who. You got guys like KJ, Zafro, all these guys who were there in that moment right. uh, during that time in the UK, uh, pre-97, 98 financial this crisis before you got into the entrepreneurship yeah, scene yeah so Nazrin has always known that I was always entrepreneurial because of what I was doing you know it wasn't just DJing I was organizing I was literally the ringleader in that scene and that influence led to networks that he wanted to tap into for the formation of UKC right. uh, the, the, me the committee members of UKC at that point in time wanted to tap into it uh, because it just wasn't efficient for them to go running across the whole UK mm. I was able to bring everybody across UK down into London in one place All right. and so that became the landing pool so that was for community that. building yeah and so that, that journey with Nazrin you know from UKC to Promoda to NITC to Technopreneurs Association of Malaysia you know and then Cradle uh, all that was done together with Nazrin uh, and the two of us were always very good sparring partners he was the theory guy i was the real reality guy you know uh, what i call sex basically <laughs> strategy execution x factor uh, <laughs> right the combination of us was the makes x sense, factor makes sense. yeah you know he he was the theory guy you know he was a policy guy he was the ideas guy you need somebody to stress test those things into reality mm -hmm. right and and um, i always became that sounding board for him even before cradle he had his own startup and you know he knew i was working for that msc company i mentioned former ceo of mathcap that usni was my investment manager that i had to report to oh. uh, and that's how you know we knew each other and it's a very interesting twist to that as well uh, on how this whole thing comes one full circle later on uh, and so Nazrin, you know, uh, was very instrumental to, to that. Uh, he was very passionate about the scene, but Doc Siva was the one, Dr. Siva Palan from uh, Team and now Proficio. Uh, it was Doc Siva who pulled Nazrin into Team, which then led to him leading the committee for the white paper around Cradle. Sorry. To be so presented the formation to the of Cradle itself? Uh, no, pre-formation. The, okay. the whole blueprint, the proposal to go to the government to say, hey, we need to create something for the startup ecosystem, a grant. This is the white paper. This is the policy paper that Nazrin presented to Tun Daim, to Tun Mahade, to EPU. The late Tan Sri Jamaluddin Jarjes had a hand in pushing it, uh, you know, so how did they convince you to go in? I managed to actually... you were already an entrepreneur by that time, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I had a few companies running. Nazrin, again, typical fashion, would, you know, call whenever he needed my help. But I had to decline for this white paper document documentation project. Uh, you know, uh, guys like Bernard Yao from MathCap was involved, Chris Chan, uh, you know, and, and you, you had other people there as well, you know, um, Renuka Sena. Uh, Doc Siva Pala and, and a whole bunch of other people who are the brains to conceive Cradle, the formation of Cradle. I couldn't get involved because I was busy with another project with the Penang State Treasury and I had to decline. Uh, but here's the weird thing. In, in hindsight, that was a, in a way a bit of a blessing because had I committed to three months, I wouldn't have had five years with Cradle. Those who did get involved with the paperwork uh, ex you know, had to sign an agreement 
uh, where they cannot they cannot get involved in Cradle once it became operational. Ah, okay. So because I managed to not get involved because I was busy with something else, I had to decline that offer so from Nazrin. you were not Nazrin. part of the planning phase, yeah. but you went into the... But when Cradle became itself. operational, mm-hmm. Nazrin said, you know, we, we need one of us, uh, you know, one of the guys to be in there. I, you know, said, you have to make me an offer. I kind of fuse because I have my own ventures and Nazrin being Nazrin, he always knows how to get what he wants. Mm-hmm. as a Scorpio. <laughs> <laughs> But um, eventually he went in as well, right? He became yeah. the CEO of uh, Cradle. Were you there at the time? When yes, he was yes. The, the leading uh, Cradle? How was that time actually? Like well, there were two periods where Nazrin came in actually. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people don't remember the part where he came in after the first two years of Cradle. Cradle became operational August 2003. He came in, if I'm not mistaken, August 2005 uh, because the head of the program, uh, it was known as Cradle Investment Program at that point in time, Shannon Bose, a Canadian lady, uh, my boss, uh, her contract had expired. And so Nazrin came in for a very short interim period. A lot of people don't realize that the fund was actually suspended mm. okay. uh, for nearly a year plus, um, mainly because there was a bit of a tiff that happened uh, between Nazrin and the CFO of MAFCAP and eventually MOF. And so we were put on a month-to-month uh, employment contract, which All wasn't right. pretty. We lost a couple of good people from the team, Tuan Lip, Patrick, and Surinta, uh, all part of the founding team. Uh, we lost some good people, and uh, but we had to keep the fight going. And Nazrin, what he eventually did was lobbied for the separation of Cradle from MAFCAP to be uh, mm-hmm. incorporatized as so Cradle at Fund. So Cradle was like a department or program under MAFCAP? Yeah, it, it was sort of, okay. sort of uh, MOF was our grandfather, our MAFCAP was like... It wasn't like a standalone... Uh, no, it was incubated under or, MAFCAP. Okay. Um, and so MAFCAP, you know, reported our progress to MOF mm. uh, for this thing because it, it was a pilot project it, nothing had you know it was it was ground pre- groundbreaking as a grant and it was the first time a grant was actually government agency uh, or ministry grant was being managed by private sector people mm. not government servants all right um, so the team that was brought in yeah the, the, the initial right? team okay, all all of us came from private sector really bold uh, really innovative even the united nations wanted to copy our model mm. Uh, we had consultations with them at one point, um, you know, for them to set up their own version of their grant based on our model. Based on Cradle's model. Yeah, even the uh, TDF fund, Technopreneur Development Fund in Ma- uh, in MDEC was based off Cradle. I mean, that's always a good thing. It yeah. More money and more funds, more grants for the yeah, ecosystem, yeah. why not, right? But it also created a, a dilemma because mm. uh, you had people, you know, double dipping. The more mm. grants you have, entrepreneurs will go t- for both instead of just one. So that's where the grant burners come in? Yes, I somehow. Guess? <laughs> yeah. So Nazrin came back in, so, you know, Dato Husni, who I mentioned, eventually became CEO of MAFCAP. Uh, Nazrin, myself, and a lot of the people who were involved in the creation of Cradle were all Technopreneurs Association committee members. Mm. And we were the guardians of, you know, the, the, pri- the public sector guardians or private sector guardians of this program because as an industry association, we wanted to help more startups being born, and Cradle was uh, instrumental to that. 